Thank you, Melissa, and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ensemble webinar. Um, as Melissa said, my name is Michał, and I'm here with my colleagues Astrid and Ben, who will be answering your questions in the chat box during the presentation. Today we'll have a short presentation and three a demos, so I'll have to toggle between the slides and the browser, and there will be some more time for any outstanding questions at the end of the webinar. So today I'm going to show you how you can visualize your own data in the Ensemble Genome Browser. Okay, so Ensemble allows you to upload your own data and display in the browser plotted along the genome. And there are two ways of doing it, depending on the data size. So small files can be uploaded directly to Ensemble. In that case, we are saving the data. Therefore, it's not possible for large files above 20 megabytes to be visualized in that way. So if you're working with larger files, they need to be attached as remote files, which basically means you first need to put them online on either HTTP or FTP site and then provide a link to the file in the Ensemble browser. So basically point Ensemble to the file. There is no size limit as we do not host those files in this scenario, so you can make them as big as you'd like. What is great about visualizing your own data in Ensemble is that you can save it to your own Ensemble account. And Ensemble accounts are totally free and you do not get any correspondence from us. You can then share your data or the visual representation of it with your collaborators, for example, or generate really nice figures which you can then use in your research as Ensemble is open access and free to use. On the downside, we only offer trivial security. Okay, so when you upload your data to Ensemble, it's not incorporated into our database and it doesn't become public or anything like it, but we do not have the bank level security to protect your data from being hacked. Therefore, please bear that in mind if you're working with sensitive data, like for example, patient's data, make sure it's pseudonymized before putting it online. We support a bunch of different file formats, um, allowing for visualizing features like genes and variants, but also structural variants or different um, values and scores plotted along the genome. You can also visualize sequencing reads aligned to the reference, for example, BAM files. It's not an exhaustive list, and if you'd like to know more about the supported file formats and their specification, check out our documentation page on the file formats under the link below, which I'm also going to show later on during our demonstration. If you're working with larger files and you wonder where and how to host them online, we recommend either FTP sites, if your institution or your institute has one. Alternatively, you can try Figshare or Cyverse, and we do have a blog post on using Cyverse, which you can find under the link below. All right. It's best to see it all in action, so now we'll visualize two different file types, starting with a small bed file. Bed is a feature format, composed of one line per feature. In this case, we are dealing with three large deletions found in patients with microcephaly. Those deletions are described by tab-separated columns, with the first column being chromosome, Second, start position. Third, the end position. And the final optional column stands for the feature name. Here, the deletions are named after the patients. So we've got P1, P2, and P3. There are also extra columns that you could add if you wanted to. And to learn more about them, please visit our documentation pages. OK, I'm going to jump out of my presentation now and I'm going to copy our input data. And now I'm going to go to the Ensemble Genome Browser by typing www.ensemble.org, which will take you to the Ensemble homepage. And there are a few different ways of visualizing your own data in Ensemble, and I'm going to show you a couple of them. 
I'm going to start with scrolling down and clicking on use my own data in Ensemble. I'm going to click here which takes you to our help and documentation pages on how to visualize your own data in Ensemble. First, I'd like to point out the file types link. I'm going to click on it now, and that takes me to a page with all of our supported file formats that you could possibly upload to Ensemble and their specification. If you're not sure what any of these mean or how they're formatted, just click on them individually to get some more background information. Let's click on the bed file now. And here you can find all the details on the bed file format. I'm going to go back for now using the uh, back button in my browser. I could add my own data by clicking on this custom tracks blue button which would take me straight to the data submission form but I'm not going to do it just yet, I'm going to show you another way of doing it. I'm going to go to the home page by clicking on the Ensemble logo. Another way of doing it is adding your own data directly from the Species home page. I'm going to click on Human now where you can find display your data in Ensemble. Clicking on this link jumps you to the data submission form. Okay, so what we need to do first is to give our data a name. I'm going to call it bed demo. We then need to provide our data. We can do that either by pasting the data directly into the text box or alternatively by uploading a file using the browse button for files up to 20 megabytes which allows you to search for a file on your computer. Okay, the last thing we need to do is to choose the file format from the drop-down list. I'm going to click on choose and I'm going to select bed. If I uploaded a file from my computer using the browse option, Ensemble would automatically recognize the file extension and would have picked the file format for me. But by pasting the data in the data box, we need to do it ourselves. Now we are ready to click on add data. It might take a little while. Here we are. Hopefully you've got a thank you message saying that your data has been uploaded successfully. With an option to jump to the nearest region with data, which I'm going to do now by clicking on the genomic location link. Which takes me to the location tab, region in detail view, which contains the data I just uploaded. The data is still loading and it might take a while depending on how large your file is and your internet connection. For the purpose of this webinar, I have the file already preloaded in another tab. You can see here the default ensemble data like the genome assembly track and genes tracks and also our newly added custom track named bed demo on top. Our deletions are displayed as brown blocks plotted along the genome with the names we provided. So we've got P1, P2 and P3. And you can see they overlap some genes and their transcripts. This track behaves as any other track in Ensemble, so you can manipulate it, you can move it around, you can change the track style and you can also remove it once you're done working with it. So now I'm going to show you how to attach larger files in Ensemble. I'm going to go back to my presentation for now. Our second demonstration is visualizing RNA-seq Illumina reads from human chromosome 20 stored in a BAM file. Our file can be found in a public directory under the following link. Let's have a look at the folder now. 
I'm going to copy this URL and go back to my browser. That's the address we just copied. Here we have a bunch of BAM files and their corresponding index files with a BAM.BAI extension. Please note that when pointing ensemble to your reads hosted online, you only need to specify a link to the BAM file itself, not to the whole directory. Also, there is no need to specify links to BAI files. However, the index files need to be there in the same directory for ensemble to work. Okay, what I'm going to do now is copying the URL to the chromosome 20 read by right-clicking on this BAM file and choosing Copy Link Location. I'm going to go back to the Ensemble browser now. You can also display your data directly from the Location tab, anywhere in the genome, by clicking on the Custom Tracks blue button. If you added any data before, it'll be listed here in this table. But we want to add another track, so I'm going to click on this blue button here, Add More Data. Once again, we have to provide a name for our new track. I'm going to call it a BAM demo um, this time. All I have to do now is provide a URL to our file hosted online in a public directory by pasting the copied link here directly in the text box. In this case, you can see that Ensemble automatically recognized the file extension and picked the data format for me. All I have to do now is simply click on Add Data. As you can see, I've just got a message saying that the data has been attached, which I can close. So the data is loading now, but I'm not going to see any reads in this region, as we are currently in chromosome 5, while the uploaded reads have been mapped to chromosome 20. Let's jump to any gene on chromosome 20 then. For example, let's say CDH22 and go. It's quite a big file with lots of data and many, many reads, so it might take a while to load. Please give it some time, give it a minute. And just like before, for the purpose of this presentation, I've got the data preloaded in another tab. Here we have our gene CDH22 on chromosome 20. You can see the default ensemble tracks, but also our newly added BAM file. The new track is named BAM Demo, and you can actually see that the reads are split into two tracks, forward above the contig and reverse below. The grey peaks, or the histogram if you wish, represents the reads coverage, while the actual reads are shown below. OK, let's have a closer look now by drawing a box around one of the peaks to zoom in and see individual reads and their sequence. So we just jumped to the region we selected and let's do it again until we see individual reads. So let's zoom just a little bit more. OK, great. Here we have a 30 base pair window where you can see the sequence of the reads we just uploaded. The reference sequence is shown here on the bottom. You can see both strands, forward and reverse. The actual individual reads are shown in grey, with a consensus sequence from reads here on top. And the height of those bases over here on top indicates the reads' coverage. Any mismatches between your reads and the reference are highlighted in red. And here you can see both, potentially a sequencing error, but also a snip indicated by this column of red bases. That one actually looks like a heterozygous variant. Obviously, you wouldn't call your variants like that, and maybe you wouldn't do many analysis in this view. But it's a really nice way of visually inspecting your reads and variant calls if you needed to do some kind of manual curation or quality checks, for example. OK, great, that's the end of the second demo, and let's go back to my presentation as I've got one more demo for today. The last thing I wanted to talk about are track hubs. 
Apart from visualizing your own data, Ensemble allows you to add lots of publicly available data via Truck Hub registry. As you may already know, Truck is a type of data plotted along the genome. Truck Hub is basically a set of trucks, while a Truck Hub registry is an online repository of various Truck Hubs shared by either large consortia or individual researchers. You can also contribute to the Truck Hub registry yourself by creating a Truck Hub containing your own data and sharing it with the public. So now it's the time for the final demo of today. We're going to view the main select hub in Ensemble. Main stands for a matched annotation from the NCBI and EMBL ABI, which provides one well-supported transcript for every protein coding gene, agreed to be the most biologically relevant and 100% identical between NCBI's RefSeq and Ensemble. And there are two ways of adding truck hubs to Ensemble. First, by using the truck hub registry itself, and I'm going to show you how to do it now. Let's jump to the truck hub registry using the browser. You can find the Truck Hub Registry under www.truckhubregistry.org and here we have the home page. You can see there is an option to submit your own data and making it publicly available for others. I'm going to use the main search function to simply search for main select projects. I'm going to type main into the box and hit search. You can see two hits returned as it seems to be a duplicated track. To add them to Ensemble, simply click on the View in Genome Browser button. It opens a drop-down list of different genome browsers you might want to use. I'm going to go for Ensemble by clicking on it, which jumps you directly to the Ensemble browser, to the Region in Detail page. You can see the main select hub has been added to Ensemble. Here we have configured this page a dialog box where you can see the list of all available trucks in this hub, which are basically different main versions with the newest version 0.8 pre-selected. I'm going to save and close by clicking on the tick. Okay, let's search for a gene that I know has a main select annotation. I'm going to type ESPN as a gene name and click Go. You can see that this gene has multiple alternative transcripts, while our newly added main select track only lists one most biologically relevant transcript from both Ensemble in red and RefSeq in blue, which are identical. Alternatively, you can also search for Truck Hubs directly from Ensemble by clicking on Custom Tracks button and selecting Truck Hub Registry Search from the menu on the left. I could type Main here and hit Search. And as you can see, those hubs have already been attached, as we've done that earlier, by using the Truck Hub Registry page. Once you're finished working with added tracks and you don't need your data anymore, it's a good practice to delete or at least disconnect your tracks, as large amount of data might slow Ensemble down. To do so, go to Custom Tracks, where you can see all your custom tracks listed here in this table, with the option to share, save to your account if I was logged in, permanently delete or temporarily disconnect. I'm just going to disconnect them. And then save and close. That brings me to the end of our demonstration. I hope you found it useful and thank you for joining us today. See you next time. Goodbye.